first one in session. Uh, it's only a little one. Another little common. Off the top. Just have a little uh, trim down pop up to imitate the um, riser pedal I'm feeding in. Uh, no start, scare about. Just have this on my uh, bottom bait. Actually, cast it out there. It's just sitting at the back while resting a cord up tight. Just on a pace wrap. Sticky beans uh, quill. I think this little chap will get the nickname on the carrot. Look at that. Look at that for a looker. Cracking fish. It's like a proper coy leather. A little smooth skin. Um, it's like a coy ghostly. A bright orange. Right, I am. Six pound. Lovely fish. Number two. Oh. Let's get back. Right, fish number three. God, this one's moving. Fish number, sorry. Fish number three, only a little one. Um, I'm going to get a packing so lively. Just put the second rod out on the uh, bottom bait, same as the first rod, ripped off straight away. A mirror about four or five pounds, let's get back. Right then. So, um, it's gone a bit quiet. It's, uh, well, it hasn't gone quiet, I say gone quiet, it's gone quiet for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, I've been up here for now for maybe uh, two or three hours. Um, spent the initial part fishing on the top. Um, I made up a, uh, a mix for on the top to try and get them going. Uh, some riser pellet, uh, floating casters, uh, standard mixers, uh, it's just a few bits and bobs. Um, they really got on it, really got on it. Um, some of the probably the most competent feeding I've seen on a surface ever. Uh, they absolutely loved it. Um, I had uh, one off the top, that was it. Um, they were so confident, they were ignoring the... They were um, ignoring the hook bait every single time. So they were so fixated on probably the casters. Um, yeah, they were so fixated on them that um, it is hard to actually present a bait that would mimic what they were obviously feeding on to make it easy, obviously, for them to take. Um, the thing is, there's a lot of fish in here, and on the bottom, they're not very finicky. It's quite dirty water, so they can't really see, um, as well as maybe on, like I say, a gravel pit. Um, so a lot of the time it's quite, you know, just keep everything simple. Same as anywhere really, just keep it simple. Um, but the trick is to keep feeding it, just keep letting it off them all the time. I think a lot of these places, because they're easy, people don't think you need to put in the effort. Um, whereas sometimes you have to put in more effort, you need to keep the fin uh, swim fed to keep those fish in the area, because they're hungry fish, and there's a lot of them, and they'll soon move off and find another area to find food. So. That's the key, I find anyway. So everything simple rigs, everything you know. Same as I use the same thing everywhere, really. To be honest, um, I've actually switched to helicopters. Um, well, one helicopter and one leg clip, and that's just because um, I had three bites on the <coughs> cool. I had three bites on the bottom um, since putting the rods out, and I've lost three leads because I've been using leg clips, and there's nothing for them to get caught up on. So I think it's just because the fish are, are smaller, they're lively, they shake around a lot, 
they manage they do discharge the uh, lead quite easy. So I've uh, I had a bite on one, and instead of putting it back out, I decided to change it over and put on a helicopter, um, just so I don't lose the lead every time, because I really don't need to here. Otherwise I run out of leads. Um, but yeah, I put um, a speeder on top, and I only had one, and um, it went quite quiet. Missed a few. Um, and then... I don't know what it was, but so much I said to me, just stick the bottom bait, so you know you get that feeling sometimes. Um, the, the fish on the top had sort of quietened down a bit, they, hadn't, they weren't as on it, and they were sort of drifting around more, not so sort of concentrated. They might have even been fed up quite a lot, and they, they'd they stopped sort of feeding. Um, so I stopped feeding in the, the mix on the top, and I, uh, I flicked out a bottom bait. And um, basically, I've been firing some baits out to the far margin, which is where I generally get them. Actually, if I turn it around, so there's the swim. See if that stays there. Right, so I've been firing um, some uh, boilies out to the far margin um, over this reed line here. Um, basically, this uh, lake stream fed, and um, the stream comes in at the top end, which is the right of the uh, picture, up by the um, dam. Sorry, it goes out up the uh, top end by the dam, and it comes in to the left up on the shallows it's only a small stream that they've dammed um, but there's um, obviously a, a original channel from, of where it, um, where it did flow through originally before they uh, flooded it into a lake and um, that's generally one of the good areas to fish to it's a slight, slight difference in depth not massively um, maybe sort of even only sort of eight inches really in some areas it's not a huge different in depth um, down maybe towards the dam more it's probably slightly deeper um, it deepens off maybe sort of a foot or so but um, it's definitely a natural course of where the, the river is flowing through and it must hold um, natural food I think it must have a bit of a natural food ladder there just because of maybe what the uh, lake bed originally, oh sorry, the stream bed originally was made of um, and it probably uh, induces natural life I would have thought and uh, invertebrates to, uh, to hatch in there but um, generally it seems to be a good area anyway and um, I've always found, I mean I've probably fished here for 20 years um, obviously 20 years ago I was young uh, but um, I used to just fish on a float but in the past maybe 12, 15 years, something like that, I've uh, sort of probably carp fished it more seriously, especially when I went to school um, in my uh, in, uh, senior years. Anyway, I um, yeah, I've been tricking a few baits in over there, and um, oh, I wonder if that's a fish down there. Some ripples coming out just down in, uh, in front of me. They always come along the edges on the evenings if, uh, if there's any float restricted in. I've had quite a few nicking one off the top like that, heron stalking. But anyway, yeah, I put um, put the rods over there and basically within uh, well, I didn't even put the back rod rest on and uh, the rod had um, pulled up tight and was away. So um, that was good. I had a uh, fish, I'd probably get the nickname the carrot. I think that could be a bite.
bit annoying. it a little bit but um, it was a really small fish and um, I could tell the way it was fighting the way it come in right okay I was just saying that fish um, it dropped off it was a really small fish the way it was jagging or jaggedy fighting and shaking his head about too much it was um it was clearly a little one um, I might sort of show you quick because I've um, just brought it in as a helicopter set up it just sort of boshed this to quite together quite quick, but it's very, very effective sort of rig. Um, most of it's fox components. Um, obviously, quite a fox and Nash um, person at the moment. I think their uh, their tackle is uh, really good at the moment. Um, they've definitely upped the game. But anyway, I've got um, 17 pound uh, X line. First time I've ever used X line today. Um, I've never been a massive um, not believer, I, I think is good, but I've just never really seen the, any need for me to use a fluorocarbon line. Um, I've used heavy lines to, and I'm using slack lines on some lakes, but I don't really agree with a lot of that anymore. Um, I don't think you can really get line that slack. So, um, I've bought this more because I actually fish a more direct line and it's very clear and not as hard, not as easy sorry, to see in the war. So um, it also is strong, and it was a good compromise um, between strength and um, invisibility, basically. Anyway, drop my rod. Right, so what I've got is we will start. Oh, I just dropped it. Great. Let end. That's a one and a half ounce distance lead, probably quarter, doesn't matter what lead you use. Um, unless you are fishing on a really clear lake and you can you know what you're fishing over and you can see the bottom and see the lead stands out a mile, really don't think it matters. Um, not worth worrying about. Uh, especially when my hook baits over here, I don't think they're going to spook that much off of it. I've got one of these um, tapered fox. Um, if you can see the end of it there, tapered fox um, helicopter sleeves. Um, the design, I think, for chance, so that when the ring is down here, it, it doesn't damage the line. I think people have been cut through before because of the amount of pressure on that section there. So they've created these little uh, links to protect the line. And then above that, just got a tungsten. I think they're four or five mil beads. And then there's a little. Um, tungsten bead, I don't know what they're called, but um, little tapered bead by Fox. These are Fox components. That just sits on the top. It's got larger ball at the bottom ends, which just sits over, and then it can pull off easy if it does get caught up. And I've just got a quick change uh, flexi ring on there. Little sleeve. There is something. Then just a standard sort of. 8 inch at length, um, I can't remember what this at length material is, it's um, one of the fox coated um, braids, a little bit of Nash, Klingon putty, best putty I've ever used, it sticks too well sometimes, it gets quite frustrating, you can't get it off, a long hair, um, that's a fox liner liner, a um, little bit of um, silicon tubing just to uh, hold the hair in place, quite a long hair. And then that's a sticky baits krill uh, dumbbell and a sticky baits krill white one, 12 mil pop up, I think that is, which balances it out perfectly. And that's all I've been using. Um, little edge, not really an edge, but not many people use it. I'm wrapping it in paste. Now, okay, that is designed to balance, and wrapping it in paste will, will take away any buoyancy, but this paste breaks down really quick, especially in warm water. I mean, we're in August. Um, it breaks down really quickly, so I'm not really 
fussed about that. By the time it goes out there, settles, breaks down a bit, gives off attraction, the fish is going to nail it. Um, I'm not too, uh, not too bothered. So that's the rig. Another blog time. Got another little one. Uh, to be fair, most of the fish in there are little. <laughs> um, be lucky, yeah. Well, there's a few doubles in there, in there, but obviously that's a good fish. There's maybe one, two twenties at the most, um, if they're still around. Anyway, um, bottom bait rod again. As you can see, another little pasty. Uh, this one took a liking to a. Uh, Crow dumbbell balanced off with a uh, crow white one. So, uh, nice fish, nice little fish. A little bit thin, probably do with a uh, bit, bit more food in them to be honest. But um, I'm putting a lot of boilie out there, so uh, they're getting a bit to eat. Um, don't want to burn out there a little bit longer actually than uh, the last rod. So, uh, I just lost one on the left rod, um, put that back out. As I was setting the clutch on that rod, the right rod ripped off, and this one really ripped off. Um, he obviously wanted that, but uh, let's get him back and um, get a few more of them. Oh, I think this is a uh, fish number six. Absolutely nailed. I uh, just had a fish on this rod and put it back out. I've uh, just changed this one to a helicopter as well because um, the last fish I had I lost the lead, so I switched this one to a helicopter and that must have only been out there. Maybe five minutes at the most. Very, very lively little stocky. Mm -hmm. yeah, just trying to get from the leg. It's got a little orange. Oh. Could be a marking from stocking actually. If he's a little stockfish, very little one. Probably a four pound. Whoa. Come here. Very lively little fish, really. There you go, got a funny little orange mark on uh, it. That's number six. Maybe. I can't remember what I'm on now. I think it's about six, seven, something like that. Another one off the bottom. Again, on the krill. Let's get it back out. Bit of a liner there on the right one. Just eating a pack of uh, turkey ham. I think I'm on um, about six fish tonight, aren't they? Definitely stood on that area. I always seem to be there. And again, there's a fish move around. What was interesting though was um, there's not really any fish rolling.
which I'm um, usually see them boshing and crashing over there. But um, they're not doing that, do they? shelf life and um, it's probably the best shelf life I've ever used. Brilliant. So we're uh, just watching the rods. It's uh, about ten past eight. I fished in about nine, half nine. See, so, uh, I'm gonna get. I'm not. I've enjoyed the uh, afternoon. Um, for my birthday, it's been alright. Getting a few bites. I love it this time, and it's uh, nice and quiet. It's not a lot of people seem to go home quite early. Um, you get a sort of last sort of hour and a half. It's nice and quiet. I think there's a one or two maybe down towards the dam. But um, yeah, it's nowhere up this end. I can fish nicely across to those uh, reeds without anyone getting in my way. A bit like old times. scavenge. Lovely things. Now, um, anyway, um, my, uh, the, uh, girlfriend's, um, mum and, uh, stepdad went back yesterday. Much to, uh, her disappointment. It wasn't the best day yesterday, if I'm honest. To be honest, I saw her at lunchtime today and, uh, she was still very upset, um, which is to be expected. But, um, we've just uh, um, discussed going back there now next year. She's um, 99% sure that she's going to go back. I mean, she will go back, I know that. Um, I'd like to, it's just... Um, being self-employed, you don't, oh well, personally, I don't like taking too much time off in one go. There we go.
Well, that was disappointing. That's our second fish loss. Interestingly, since I've uh, changed to a helicopter egg, I've had one on it and lost two. Um, I've lost one on the left rod, one on the right rod. Looks needle sharp. Um, I do wonder whether, because of uh, the leg clip ejecting the lead with these smaller fish, they don't um, they don't bounce along. Uh, the lead doesn't bounce around because it's obviously not on the line. And you get a better, uh, more direct contact because where they move, where they're so uh, jaggedy in the fight and erratic when they're small, they seem to shake the hook out very easy. I used to find it on here a lot when I used to fish it quite a lot. Um, I think I might try a little, uh, a smaller lead. Mind you, I think that one on there is only an ounce and a half. To be fair, the other ones have got really small. Let's just flick it back out there quick. Time. Um, I just lost one on the right rod. Put it back out there. Two minutes later, I've got another one. Um, it's another little one. I mean, most of the fish I'm getting are the uh, the young ones, young little hungry ones. Very very lively as well. I was trying to jump off the other. There he is, another little one. Um, right rod, sticky baits grill again. A little bit of pace wrapped around it. It's doing a business pretty well. Obviously they're only little ones, but it's all good fun. Nice uh, nice bit of action on my birthday. Let's get back out anyway, because we'll probably get another one before we go. Oh, I like to get back.
happened towards the end of my session now. It's uh, just coming up to five to nine. Um, I haven't really got a lot to pack down really, but um, I'm going to just lay the rods down on the uh, deck. Pack the bank sticks and that away. Um, just pack the rest of the bits into the bag. I mean, it's not really going to take me long, but uh, hopefully uh, it would be nice to get a bite on the rods uh, so I can pack them away now and get going instead of... I don't think I'm going to put them back out if I get a bite now, so... It's uh, not been too bad of a session, you know. Quite similar to the last one, really, up here. Um, I think if I had maybe seven, eight fish, something like that, I think. It's been alright. Um, I've lost two or three, I can't remember. I think it might be two. Um, I mean, obviously, if I'd landed them, I could possibly be in double figures, which would have been good. Um, it's still been a good session. Um, getting a lot of uh, probably drop runs, I think, um, which could be because I'm using quite big hooks. Um, I'd probably scale the rig down slightly if I um, if I was there for longer. If I was doing a night, say, I'd uh, probably scale the rig down. But um, at the same time, I might also not and put a bigger bait on so I don't catch so many little ones. Get a bit of sleep. But, um, it's been a nice little birthday session, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be back out. Maybe weekend, I don't know. Uh, see what happens. I need to get to my syndicate and start uh, penciling time on there now. So, uh, more than likely, that's where I will be. Um, but I'll have to see. As the uh, days start to get darker, I'm, um, I will start going there on the evenings because I don't have to stay as long to fish into dark. Because obviously, because of the nature of the lake, the best time is that first and last hour of day, basically, of daylight. Um, sorry, the last the hour before it gets dark and the hour after it gets dark is generally the best time. So. That's good by finishing.
Mission number nine. Very, very lively little common. Uh, they all seem like that today. Right. Mission number nine. And uh, the other rods are going off. <laughs> so uh, I'd better go sort that out. But there's number nine. Let's we'll see if that's number ten.
and ten past nine. Is that uh, one after the other? I think that's number ten in the net now. Um, I think I'm going to just uh, bring the rods in to be honest. And, uh, well, the rods are in, but I think I'm going to pack down. Probably not bother chucking them out. Um, if the bait's left on that uh, that rod, or chuck it out just when I'm packing this rod and packing the bank six in that way, otherwise um, I'm going to get going and that'll be the end of it. So, if you don't see any more of me, then that's the end of the fish, ten, uh, end of the session. Ten fish, or um, quickly, I'm grabbing and getting a little shot there. Last one, a little bit bigger than the last one. Maybe, don't know, five, six pound. Fish number ten. So, landed ten. Lost two, three, maybe. Um, average size of what, five pound or so? Five, six pound? Which is pretty small, to be honest. Oh dear. They're so lively. There we go, so get back down and get home. Not a bad little sesh, 10 fish.